to have the pleasure of speaking with Cam Curry from Curry Metals and Mining Group. How are you today, Cam? I'm doing very well, Tracy. How are you doing? Cam, you come uh, highly recommended to me. In fact, you know, if I was rich enough to get in your book, I would definitely uh, be speed dialing you. Can you tell me why you have been called one of Canada's top 150 investment advisors? Um, I think, you know, just track record. I've been in the business over 32 years uh, um, with Canaccord uh, Genuity. And um, I guess starting in uh, 2000, year, year 2000, I became a specialist in the metals and mining group. And specialists in today's world are very few and far between. Most investment advisors, advisors are generic wealth management investors. And I solely deal with the metals and mining space for investors' portfolios. And so having that expertise and relationship, that's how I've earned that reputation. Well, we couldn't agree with you more. So we're delighted to have you today. And of course, many of us are holding on to our purse strings. Uh, what's Warren Buffett's rule number one is don't lose money. And number two is repeat <laughs> rule number one. So could you start by telling us how do we in the metals and mining industry not lose money? Can you comment? Well, we have been in a very different environment for the last uh well, in the last six months specifically, um, you know, last year we were ringing the, the bell to all our clients about the bubble that was unfolding in U.S. equities. And uh, fortunately enough, we, we kept them in their other portfolios thinking and steering away from the stupidity of valuation matrix. Uh, every time a new company IPO in the States, it was like a World Cup soccer match starting. And uh, so we have been concentrating and focusing clients on metals and mining for a number of reasons. Um, metal side, copper side. Um, it's not just demand side, more importantly, it's a supply side issue and people don't understand that. There's no money going to the ground, there's no projects coming on the pipeline. And with the EV movement evolving, copper over time will do very, very well. As I say that, we've been neutral on copper for the last six months because we do see a recessionary environment unfolding. And more so now we see a stagflation recession environment unfolding. So we've been very concentrated on the precious metals um, and as a barbell to the risk of the equity markets. You know, some macroeconomists that we're speaking to are telling us that gold is finally going to have a bull run this fall. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on gold and precious metals and maybe pick one or two that you like and okay. lead us down the right lane, please, Cam? Okay. I, um, I'm very bullish on precious metals and I've actually been very much a crusader in the industry. I meet with uh, World Gold Council on a regular basis. Um, our mining team at Can Accord, our bankers, our analysts, uh, we're the number one uh, mining franchise in the country in terms of financings. Um, we've had a bit of an anomaly in the last two months though. We've had, as I call it, almost a black swan event in precious metals. And that's solely due to the strength of the US dollar. If you look at gold and all of the currencies, the yen, the euro, it's been breaking new highs. Uh, most central banks around the world have been adding to their gold positions, but being here in North America, because of the US dollar strength, gold has unduly been taken out here, in the, you know, $150 down in the last, uh, last two months, at a time when it should have been performing, but it was a dollar that, that drove it down. So as we speak today, the dollar was down um, was up earlier and gold reversed itself and we're extremely bullish. We're adding to positions very aggressively this morning. So you're adding to positions. Yes. Can you give us one of your favorite positions or at least a uh, hint to where, where we should start? Should we go to your website, for instance, Cam? Th that's probably a good start. Um, when it comes to one, I typically don't, don't recommend just one company. I have a basket of companies. And again, they range from seniors, mid-tiers to developers. Uh, I don't play in the junior exploration grassroots because I think that's just too high risk. Um, but you're looking at the gold sector right now and the money when, as it comes in, because let's face it, there's been an absence of buyers. I've sat back for the last month and just waited, waited, waited. And now I think today's trigger with the dollar rolling over, which is the most overcrowded trade in the currency market, money now is gonna start rotating out of dollars. I don't think it's going back to the yen aggressively with what's going on there. It's not going to the, going to the euro. I think the gold trade is just, just gonna start reinvigorating itself here. So you can be buying the seniors that are giving you 4% dividend yields, 
um, on a senior side, one of my top picks is Endeavor Mining with a 4% dividend yield, um, trading at 10 times EBITDA. It's the only FTSE 100 listed gold company in London. And I know with high confidence, the generalist funds are circling, thinking the opportunity is there, but they haven't come in yet. Stock's around $25. Our Canaccord target price is $52 in the stock. And uh, it is the preeminent first class gold company in the FTSE. That's why they're there. Okay, so after gold, would you like to make any comments on silver or throw another precious metal or base metal at us that you're intrigued with today as you're looking at this market? Well, silver, silver is a leveraged, uh, it's a beta on, on gold, no question. And, you know, if you asked me six months ago, would I think that silver would be trading below uh, $19? There's no way I would think that. Um, silver's application is, in, is, 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 is technology. It hasn't got that narrative. And that's one of the things that's so important for people to understand. The world today has been driven by narrative economics. And the narrative towards gold was dismissed because of Bitcoin. The narrative towards silver was dismissed because it just it, it hasn't been on the radar for a long period of time. Um, so silver is a leverage play to gold. Uh, the problem with silver, it's usually a byproduct. So there's not a lot of pure silver plays out there. So there's not as many ways to, to invest in silver. But when you do have silver stories that do actually evolve some district scale potentials, um, they definitely get a lot of attention because there are a lot of silver bugs, so to speak, in, in the U.S. that love to play silver stocks. Well, speaking of narrative, I don't mean to put a... a just a descriptive on you, but you're one of the nice guys, Cam. You explained to me that you like to give back. So can you give some of us investors out there uh, some advice, for instance, on how to deal with this present market? Because I do believe there's a lot of buyers out there like myself that are looking for great buys. Mm -hmm. And we would love some tips if you wouldn't mind sharing. Okay, well, I think the on the macro side, um, I'm still very bearish on the on the uh, equity markets. I think um, Europe's in a recession. The debate as to whether the U.S. is in recession, not recession, there's no question they're going to recession. You're starting to see layoffs. Microsoft yesterday, for example, announced layoffs. Tesla, 10% of their staff laid off. As we go into this recession, I also believe that inflation is going to become prevalent too. So a stagflation recession is where I think we're going. So. If you have a portfolio right now with a 60 40 you know bond equity composition that's not going to work for you going forward you have to have a metals component to uh, to hedge against the uncertainties of that and you're hearing that from more and more specialists uh, uh, rosenberg was making those comments the other day goldman sachs came out and said the same thing but i think one group that no one even really pays attention to is a group called mercer group and they're advisors to 15 trillion dollars of global assets and they're the first one to move aggressively on this. Uh, as of January 1st, by charter decision on their board, they went to a 5% recommended weighting on precious metals to counter the risks in the bond and equity markets. And uh, one of the main thrusts moving forward as to why you should have that as part of your portfolio is a stagflation environment. And uh, their 5% recommended weighting. The average five fund in the United States is one quarter of 1%. So you can imagine if you have a small, small amount of money making that transition. To, just to finish on top of that, the global market cap of all the gold mining companies in the world today is $290 billion. That's all it is. It's a very, very, very small sector. So it doesn't take a lot of money to rotate into the gold sector to have a significant impact on the equities. And to put that in perspective, Home Depot's market cap is $290 billion. So we're talking about a tiny amount of money moving into our sector. And as I said, I think the dollar has exponentialized itself. I think we're in the process of it topping out. And when money starts rotating out of the US dollar, I don't think they're going quickly back to the Euro with what's going on there or the yen with what's going on there. And Canadian dollar, we just raised our rates a full point. And uh, I just think that the gold trade is going to get much more attention in North America for the first time in a long time. Well, Cam, I'll tell you, thank you so much for joining us today. What we would love to do is have Byron W. King interview you about the gold market in our next round, if we can talk you into coming back again. Thank you for joining us.
I would love to. And thank you very much, Tracy, for the opportunity. I appreciate it.